Over to you. Thanks so much. So uh, clearly the podium is very high. So okay. <laughs> All right. So what's the real estate cost there? You have to press the button. That's it's fine. We're not as expensive as the. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay. So imagine if all of India was like that. So clearly, I mean, infrastructure is well understood. Um, and you know, as a model city, hopefully policy will shift accordingly. Except for there's a little bit of a glitch. You're a greenfield. And most of India has issues around ease of business because of, uh, I mean, it's an old civilization, for God's sake. So a lot of data, a lot of stats, uh, um, uh, immense amount of learning actually has happened uh, uh, you know, through the day. And I'm just recalling sitting here, of all things, I was recalling uh, you know, these several TV programs where you have these young kids who come from villages and they are winning uh, dance programs and singing programs and stuff like that. And there's one question, you know, you know, the judges would ask them saying, hey, you know, how did you uh, become so good? You, you, you danced like a professional. And uh, the, the one thing that they say is, hey, we learned it from YouTube. So, so you know, I mean, what, what stands out is that this is a population, an aspirational population that really doesn't want to be taught. They will learn if they have the right platforms. Um, we talk, you know, I, I think Mr. Khan spoke about the aspirational uh, districts in India. Uh, oh my God, our populations are aspirational. Um, uh, very young population, um, uh, most of them under the age of uh, 25 today, uh, both in the metros and, and in the villages. And what is amazing is the, the, the metro population is, is living and feeding out of uh, 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 video content where even TV and entertainment is shifting completely onto the digital platform, from family TV to an anytime, anywhere, onto your mobile devices. The whole concept of big screens actually has gone and probably will revive back again, but your, your, your personal relationship with your mobile phone is in many ways far superior to that of uh, good friends today, right? So that's, that's the behavior of a metrosexual. But when you go into uh, the villages, the villages is, is the sleeping tiger that is just waiting to be awoken, and it is in, in some uh, bits and pieces. I mean, clearly, uh, our young population today is consuming video wherever there is infrastructure. So I love the statement that Mr. Faruqi made is that infrastructure is going to lead demand. We don't need to, I mean, India doesn't need to be a country where demand leads uh, the need for infrastructure. Um, and it's very well established through the day that, that you know, the, the need for infrastructure is there. The government has recognized it. Everyone in this room definitely uh, values it. Um, and, and there is a lot of other things that are happening. I was just putting down my thoughts. Um, and that is, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's far more than the numbers and stats. I mean, we're talking about human experiences. Think about this. You know, I was just, just listening to Geo. And Geo is so uh, uh, disruptive. It's such a brilliant company where, I mean, other than being a network, they have an apparels company, they have a groceries company, and everything is coming on to the platform. So um, what I see really is that Geo is setting the tone for business models, uh, a convergence even in business models that are taking place today. So if TV is shifting to uh, the digital platform, uh, and FTTH will become a reality soon, uh, and Geo is converging uh, as far as business uh, models are concerned. Smart cities is bringing in a different, uh, a crazy standard of living that probably we cannot dream or imagine uh, today. I mean, I was just saying that if you're getting water that's clean, do you get clean air also? I'm just curious because you know when you live in Delhi, you don't. That's one thing we would love to have. <laughs> and then there is this other aspect which 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 I saw earlier, but something that India really requires is. Is, is, uh, is business models uh, that transform the utility uh, companies or even the PSUs for that matter. So can the uh, digital infrastructure or even the maintenance of the digital infrastructure or, or, or various ways of going about it, the utilities uh, of this country, the roads, the highways, uh, uh, you know, uh, the gas pipelines, um, uh, power for that matter and so many others, can they have parallel forms of revenue because of the uh, digital network that 
rightfully needs to be laid very fast. So there is, there is a role for um, uh, private sector and there is actually a big opportunity in the hands of the, uh, of the public sector. So with BharatNet and Smart Cities, one thing is seen for clear that the government has become a big stakeholder in the rollout and maintenance of digital networks. And if utilities come into uh, this area, for sure the, the uh, percentage of uh, government uh, playing a role in digital networks is going to be pretty significant. So it's established, right? So infrastructure is needed. Uh, you know, private sector uh, is, is clearly understood that. Public sector is, is running behind it. So what really is the big hurdle around this whole thing? And I think the biggest issue is ease of business. India has moved up in the, uh, the you know, in the, uh, uh, you know, in the ranking of ease of business. But when it comes to uh, the everyday, uh, uh, you know, uh, issues on ground for folks who are operationally rolling out things, there are there are a lot of issues. So let's start with the government sector because we spoke about that. I think there is a lot of scope to um, look at ease of business. Um, I would say almost a document for the telecom industry that captures what GIFT has done in terms of how we can fast, you know, pace up the rollout and deployment of broadband networks. But also, um, just think in terms of simple things, RFP transformation, or uh, you know, something that will bring in on-time payments so that instead of just investments, if just the payment rolls well, uh, there, there would be, uh, you know, the, the companies would be flushed with funds to redeploy uh, resources uh, into the system. On the private sector, yes, ROW is an issue and uh, GIFT is really paving the path in highlighting what can be done in greenfield. But there's got to be ways in the brownfield and I think it's just the simple things like, hey, you know, let's show the path of, you know, what iCareer has done uh, in terms of the economic jump because of uh, the broadband network and more a centralized viewpoint even within the states and the cities on what broadband network can do. It's not department based but a more central based uh, perspective. So I think you know government if they have some very basic structural tweaks in the way they are uh, shaped even within the MCDs or, or, or the states will actually be able to appreciate what broadband networks can bring and therefore address, they would be wanting to actively address the ROW-like uh, issues, uh, for example. So the fact that economic development will come in leaps and bounds because of broadband network versus, hey, I need my money on a year-on-year -year basis, this is my revenue of ROW, is, is I think something the industry recognizes it, but no one knows how to solve this problem and one way is to bring in some structural changes even within the um, uh, government um, network. So I think um, uh, I just I want to keep it, oh I still have time, good. Uh, so, so the other aspect I would think is that you know I mean given that um, there is such a huge opportunity around fiber, uh, around the deployment of fiber the manufacturing of fiber becomes therefore very important and we have a brilliant ecosystem in the country as far as fiber manufacturing is concerned. Uh, Starlight, for example, is now into 100 countries uh, with about 200 plus patents. And uh, you know, in the IMC recently we launched uh, an optical fiber which is looking at more than 800 count in a cable size that is only 48 count. So when you're looking at your trays, you can just think of the number of super highways that will open up in, in such a small space. The other thing is that the fiber, which is Indian fiber, is actually is bend insensitive, which is really important in the terrains of uh, India, especially the brownfield areas where you can pretty much, you know, uh, uh, roll the fiber around trees and poles and still the quality of the uh, uh, data uh, will continue to be there. Why am I saying this? Quality-wise, standard-wise, uh, India can meet and, in fact, beat a lot of the standards uh, in the world as far as optical fiber is concerned. However, just the manufacturing and how to scale this is a completely different issue. And it is not about uh, uh, the Indian uh, community not having the capability or the capacity. It is just that very often, because of the challenges that we face in just manufacturing as a country, we just become a little more expensive than a lot of countries 
where they are giving um, uh, cost advantages. Um, uh, for example, ASEAN countries uh, is a tax haven for manufacturing, and we continue to be here to manufacture here. Um, and, and when we're doing that, I think where the, uh, what the, what the government, uh, and the government has come a long way as far as telecom is concerned, but this is more something that, you know, the finance ministry should be looking at is how do we make this uh, financially more viable, not only in terms of investments, but just make it easy in terms of, hey, you know, give a tax holiday for a short while so that, you know, we welcome MNCs to come here, uh, expand their services here, build the skills within the country, uh, expand domestic uh, consumption and, uh, sorry, domestic, uh, uh, you know, manufacturing. And we do it in a way that we are not, you know, we don't lose the game only because of a cost issue. Once we scale, we will manage cost because today, I think India is very confident as far as manufacturing is concerned. I can safely say that we can become the fiber capital to the world if very small tweaks in the government policies take place. And uh, TV, I'd just like to uh, appreciate BIF for taking up issues around ease of business in the past and you know, bringing something like this together. I hope that you know, all these uh, you know, pieces uh, and you know, recommendations are put together and taken to the government. We have a great opportunity, but a short window. And uh, something that if we take the right steps today, it can be very historic, like all you know, you and Umang were talking about. This could be one of them. Thank you.